Hi, I'm Griffin Johnson, the Armchair Historian, guest narrating this Japsy episode. I'd like to thank Japsy for this opportunity. Today we'll be exploring the Great Eastern Crisis. During the 19th century, the Ottoman Empire lost a great deal of its territory to the Russians and to independence movements. But thanks to British and French intervention, the empire survived, but they were forced to take out loans from Western powers, putting them in debt for the first time. And the debt worsened after the Crimean War when they tried to rapidly improve their navy. Plus, to stop independence movements, the Ottomans introduced a series of reforms, but many in the Ottoman Empire didn't believe they went far enough, and in 1865 they formed a secret society, the Young Ottomans. However, in the 1870s, the Prussians defeated the French and ousted Napoleon III, and the new French Republic wasn't as keen to defend the Ottomans. The new German Empire and unified Italy changed the balance of power in Europe dramatically. Russia entered into an alliance with Germany and Austria, meaning Britain, if they sought to go to war with the Russians to defend the Turks, would now do so alone. So Russia had continued to support Balkan nationalist movements, and the Ottomans continued to face rebellions, like in Serbia, Herzegovina, and Epirus during the 1850s. Then, in the early 1870s, the Ottoman Empire was hit with floods and famine, putting them on the brink of bankruptcy. Furthermore, they also had to deal with thousands of Circassian refugees who were fleeing from the Russian genocide. So they imposed new taxes, angering many, especially the Christians in the Balkans, who had already managed to gain some independence from the Sultan's government. So people in Herzegovina, with weapons from Montenegro, rose up in 1875. With the help of thousands of volunteers from all across the region, they destroyed border posts, attacked local Muslims, and ambushed Ottoman troops. Inspired by their success, the Bulgarians also rose up in 1876 during the April Uprising. The Ottomans were quick to respond to this, however, and their irregular forces, the Bashi Bazouk, committed a number of atrocities in quelling the uprising. In Salonika, a riot erupted after a Christian girl was allegedly forced to convert, and this ended with foreign consuls being killed by Muslims. This, along with the news of Bulgarians being massacred, outraged the British, meaning the Ottomans were left completely without an ally. In Constantinople, things didn't look much better. Thousands protested against the Sultan and his government for their alleged weakness against the foreign powers after the Salonika riots. Thus, Sultan Abdul Aziz was deposed by his ministers that supported a constitutional government, and his nephew Murad V took over in late May. Looking to exploit this turmoil, the semi-independent states of Serbia and Montenegro declared war on the Ottomans in June of 1876 and achieved a number of early successes. Meanwhile, with Murad in power, the first constitutionalist era in the Ottoman Empire began, but he was forced to step aside due to mental illness in late August. Abdul Hamid II took over just as Ottoman troops began pushing the Serbians back and threatened to take Belgrade. So the Russians stepped in and issued an ultimatum, forcing the Turks to sign an armistice in October. With this peace, the great European powers met to try to settle the issue at the Constantinople Conference. There, they agreed the peoples of Bosnia and Herzegovina should have some form of autonomy as a united region, and two more autonomous regions would be created for the Bulgarians. However, Austria and Russia had previously signed the secret Reichstag agreement on how to divide the Balkans. They agreed not to create a large Slavic state in the Balkans, and both of them would take Ottoman territory, with Austria taking Bosnia and Russia, Bessarabia, and the Caucasus. The Ottomans had sent Mithat Pasha, the constitutionalist Grand Vizier, to the conference, and he refused to accept the terms presented to him. And Alexander II of Russia had predicted as much and could use this refusal as grounds for war. So at the Budapest Convention, he made another secret agreement with the Austrians and prepared to go to war. They agreed that Austria would remain neutral in the future war, and independence would be granted to nations like Bulgaria, Romelia, and Albania, and Constantinople would become a free city. Then, in April of 1877, with the Ottomans without allies in Europe, the Russians finally felt like they could go to war against them, and the Russo-Turkish War saw the Ottomans lose a great deal of territory and influence in Europe. Thanks for watching, and again a huge thanks to Jabsy for allowing me to host this episode. If you'd like to see my videos, feel free to stop by the Armchair Historian channel on YouTube.